On arrival in Ibiza on a Thursday in October. It's 1am and I'm outside a cafe in shorts and t-shirt. I circle in the road towards a shuffled approach. The gentleman inside, he has the spitting image of a John Smith's belly and a tash that had farewell at darts. He saunters across the tiles and then starts collecting menus. I inquire, half English, half Spanish, and he welcomes, half smiling, half sighing. And in walking towards the service point, he beckons me inside. In all his weary nights, I bet he never deemed this poetic. Aside from two locals on Coca-Cola, I'm the only punter in sight. I widen my eyes for a nod of approval to reach inside the fridge, grasping a beer and a litre and a half of water. The bartender sails across her freshly swept tiles before leaning towards tiptoes at the till. I speak in Spanish and she responds in English. This trend is never broken. I gaze into the neon as I suck on my corona. This morning I woke up in Grimsby so I'm struggling to adjust. Black ashtrays, white tables, black chairs and silent streets. I managed to earwig about 5% of their conversation. I'm pretty sure they're slagging off a chef. But as the hombre lobs his towel over his shoulder, the bartender hums to Manu Chow as she skirts back over the tiles and I slowly peel the label from my bottle. All three of us are united and utterly alone in the most comfortable of silences I think I've ever known. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to this week's Insta session. I'll just sort myself out. I'm a bit wonky as always. Um, yeah, these sessions have been running pretty much every week since the start of May. Um, one of the only things that's got me through lockdown, to be honest with you. Um, I really enjoy welcoming poets from all over the UK and sometimes from further afield just for a relaxed chat and to check in and to share their work. Um, tonight's session is with Nabila Ahmed, who is based in Bradford, is a multilingual poet and storyteller. She's earned a name uh, gigging around the Yorkshire poetry scene and further afield. Uh, in 2018, she published, uh, self-published a book called Despite Our Differences, um, and she has featured at various festivals, inclu including the Keighley Art and Film Festival. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to see uh, what Nabila shares. So I shall invite her to join. I chose that poem about different languages and language barriers because I believe Nabila is going to share work in three, maybe even four languages tonight. So let's see. Hello. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? You all right? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, no worries. No worries. Thanks for giving up your time. It's, it's much appreciated. Um, are you joining me from Bradford tonight? I am indeed. Nice. Nice. I miss Yorkshire. Um, that's great. Yeah, you seem to be very well known and very well regarded on the Yorkshire scene. Everybody that I, I've mentioned you to has, has spoken really highly of you. Um, so I'm really looking forward to your performance tonight. I'm quite lucky in Yorkshire. We're really supportive of each other. So I've got a great poetry family here. Poetry family. Yeah, it really is a poetry family, isn't it? It really is. I love that. And um, have you been doing a lot of stuff during the lockdown? Like, so have you been performing a lot during pan the pandemic or have you used it to write or...? I've done a mixture. Um, I write usually a poem a day, so I've almost kept up with that. Um, and uh, I've done a lot of Zoom, so I was kind of expecting that when we were really quiet and I miss everybody. I think Zoom's kept us, kept us feeling a bit alive. And just, I think just to be able to see each other's faces has really helped. <laughs> Yeah, it is It is a lot nicer, isn't it, doing it on Zoom? Like, much as it's sometimes weird if there's no audience on there. Um, yes. it, it's, it's really great. And I, I don't know about you, but I've really loved going to nights from different cities and sort of getting a glimpse into different scenes and stuff as well. Um, sort of oh, opened up. Yeah. Fantastic feeling from the south, Peterborough and Leicester. And I wouldn't have gone there normally. And uh, yeah, that, it, it has been nice. Though the, um, the thing that I did like is the first poem I did, uh, I did that, that's a funny one, on Zoom, and nobody laughed. I just went. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got used to it now. Is it easier having an empty room full of people or having an empty Zoom screen? Like, it's, it's weird, isn't it, adjusting to it? I'd rather be in a room. <laughs> yeah, I know. And, and, and you notice, know, I suppose, how audiences sort of feed off each other and you almost get this, like, unspoken language in a room that, like, laughs or responds. It's strange, yeah. isn't it? But you, you never really take... You sort of take that for granted, don't you? We always have. I don't think we ever thought we'd be forced to sit inside a room and just look at lots of people on the screen, did we? 
I know. Well, I shall, I shall be smiling tonight. I'm very much looking forward to what you've got to share. Um, so, you, at the, at the moment, as far as I'm aware, you're working on a novel and a collection, uh, and you're writing a poem a day, so you're obviously very productive. Um, I mean, has... I think... Sorry, go on. <laughs> What's it? I don't know. Wait, well, it's... I was just curious as to how you, uh, how your writing might have been affected by the pandemic. Like, have you take, have you gone off a different course, or have you sort of like focused in on something, or has it not changed at all? Just curious, really. Um, the fiction's been struggled to focus on. I've, I haven't found I've got the concentration for longer pieces, or just um, for those. And um, I think there's a weird kind of fatigue, and everybody I talk to, people have. It, just feel really tired life's the same but whatever corona has done whether you got it or not there's a tiredness that we didn't have last year um and in in, in poetry though it hasn't changed i'm writing the same i still you know it that hasn't got affected well to do a poem a day that's remarkable that's i wish i could do a poem a day that's that's something else that to be fair um i know what you mean though like lack of stimulation it it, it it's sort of a strange fatigue that's set in isn't it yeah. Um, and so you're working on your debut collection, um, and you were long listed for the Verve Poetry Press. Is that right with the collection? I was. Yeah. I was. Yeah. That's. If that was a poetry manuscript, um, because I can't help writing so many different things. I've got different strands going on. So that was the poetry. I haven't done anything with it since, even though they were really kind with their feedback. Um, I think I had a soft spot for them, and I haven't found a soft spot for anybody else to send it. <laughs> Yeah, he's, yeah, it's difficult in it as a poet knowing who you want to work with and who to send it to. Like, it's a bit of a minefield out there. But I guess you just go with your gut, don't you? And what feels natural. Um, yeah, no, Verve are wonderful people. Uh, to be fair. Um, so, uh, would you be up for sharing his poem to get us started? Absolutely. I've got a couple of I've, I've got a couple of requests, so I'm going to go through one or two of those. This first one's uh, got three requests, so I have cool. to see this one. <laughs> <laughs> this was called the Year of Man, and don't ask me why, but people are always request for this one. So it's called the Year of Man. It, 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 and this year, don't stare at women. I suppose this year, don't stare at women. It, 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 don't notice if they're not wearing a niqab or a hijab. It, this year, don't pay attention to her missing scarf, her low neckline. Don't observe if she has a long, short, straight or curly hair. Don't check if it is natural or dyed. Don't see if she has a round face or ruby. Don't realise if she's fair or a tanned goddess. Don't look at what colour her eyes are, the shape of her brows, the height of her nose, the fullness or plainness of her lips. This year, don't check if she has a long neck, broad or slim build. If you don't measure her height, don't guess her bra size or the inches of her waist. If this year, don't stare at her hips or look up her legs. If this year, don't ask her shoe size, don't drool over her painted toenails. This year, leave her alone. Protect her. From yourself. Just allow her to stretch her arms in the sun and take a long deep breath. It is this year don't judge her, don't pass judgment on her, don't cramp her into a tiny jar of your expectations. This year don't stand in her way, don't block her path, don't tie her hands, don't blindfold her, don't shackle her. This year let her smile, laugh out loud, let her sing in the spring and dance in the rain. Let her smile, let her smile. Just let her smile. Into this year, don't tell her she isn't good enough, doesn't have the wisdom, the courage, the know-how, the strength, the excuses you use to hold her back and dumb her down. This year, believe in her, but more than that, let her believe in herself. Let her trust in the voices, the tiny voices that you strangled in her throat, in her eyes. Let them grow, let them grow into guzzles, into a rap, into a poem, into an essay, into a novel, into a speech, into the number one song of all time. This year, let her be, just let her be the empress that she is born to be. This year, don't tell her God doesn't like this and God doesn't like that, just to keep your own insecurities and fears at bay. This year, let her show you how God has made her and what image he has hidden in her soul. This year, don't burn her at the stake, don't throw her in the river, don't kill her before she's born, don't bury her alive, don't have sex with her when she doesn't want it, don't rape her, don't turn her into a childbearing machine, don't bind her feet, don't iron her breasts, don't mutilate her. 
this year, look at her in awe. Look at her in awe like a creature from heaven and know that if you leave her alone and only shower her with love, she will blossom and she will become a source more powerful than the wind to protect you as your mother. She will subdue lightning as your lover. She will bring heaven to earth as your wife. She will fill the universe with petals, butterfly wings and fragrance as your daughter. She will melt you into nothing as your granddaughter and she will raise you as the highest star as your friend. Every role she's assigned, she will bring to it magic that you thought only fairies possessed. Thank you. Oh, wow, that was really beautiful. Well, I, I can see why it's requested and getting so many uh, little love hearts and comments and stuff as well. Um, God, so much to, it's just so much in that poem that I could comment on. I mean, just the way it speeds up and slows down and like you're smiling one minute and then it's really bleak, but like it, it's so powerful. Yeah, wow. Thank you for sharing that. I love that. Um, how old is that poem? Is that relatively a relatively new poem or have you been doing that for a while or? It's part of the corona period. Part I just of the woke up one day. Wow. Yeah, I woke up one day and uh, um, I think it's my muse. She sometimes wakes up in a rage. So I wake up and I think, you crazy person, leave me alone. It's like, get up and write. So we'll get up and write and something like that comes out. I think, I'm glad she woke me up. <laughs> Yeah, too right. Yeah, we are. We are as well. Wow, fantastic. To have written that in the corona period. I mean, like for anyone to have written one poem of the corona period, I think is an achievement. But to write a poem like that, um, imagine when you perform that on stage, when we go back to stages. I've got great news. I've got yeah. great news. I could give a hand at the trophy, honestly. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> that was great. Um, yeah, because I guess, like, I've noticed Bradford in particular seems to have a thriving literary scene and uh, like I know Kirsty Taylor very well but I've sort of met a couple of other poets from Bradford like Sharina Lee Satie and um, Sahima Manzo Khan who I know is based in Leeds but seems to do a lot of work in Bradford it seems like there's such a rich scene there at the moment. Um, it is, it's thriving, it's absolutely picking up and good, doing this. Um, I'm relatively new and my colleagues tell me that up to two years ago, we didn't have as many options of open, uh, of open mic nights. And now we've got regulars, we kind of end up overlapping sometimes. Think, which one do we go to? And each one of them are absolute joy. And we've got some amazing hosts, Matt. We've got some absolutely amazing, generous, supportive hosts. And it makes all the difference. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Well, that's that's great to hear. That's 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 great. Um, yeah, just, I know, just having that, family like you said of artists to confide in and to bounce off and to learn from yeah it's so valuable um great lovely well uh, do you fancy sharing us another poem I've, i know you've got a couple of requests i know um i'm going to share with you a set next as part of keithley festival they asked me to do some recorded work um so i've written a set on childhood the first one's english then urdu and then bahari so I, and they're all fairly short um, I'll introduce them a little bit as I go along. So the, um, it's the third one, actually, that's the request in Bahari. Um, but I'll tell you about that when I get to it. So the first one's in English, and it's kind of funny. I wrote the one in Urdu first. And like I told you, I, told you, I kind of deal with my muse a lot. I have to have these conversations. And I woke up second day, and she was like, you don't like Bradford? You haven't wrote anything about it. I was like, what do you mean I don't like Bradford? You told me right about Kashmir. I've written about Kashmir, right? She's like, yeah, but you're Bradfordian, aren't you? I said, okay, okay. I'll but you know, like I said, I don't write much of this. Whatever she gives, I type it up. But this is what she gave me for Bradford. Um, fortunately, it's my own experiences. Luckily, she don't add her own, otherwise I wouldn't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so this one's called Childhood Street. And, and it's called One Street, Many Races. It folk from cities and villages from around the globe. Playing out all day, back gardens, alleys, and where the gypsies stay. Stealing roses, mixing them with water waiting for rotting leaves to become perfume. It buttercups to test if you love butter, daisy chains for dear friends, melting snow to drink, hiding from thunder in the falling mountains. It's running to collect an apple each from the street's granddad, picking blackberries and raspberries, thingies, fruit salads, jam sandwiches, fish fingers, kebabs, and avoiding roti. It's it, when any adult from the street could tell you off. It's when every child listened to, when everyone knew each other, the old and the new. That sense of community I have recreated every street I have moved to. That street of childhood lives within me and within you. 
Uh, that was Bradford. I was very thrilled with that. But this is how it originally started. I wrote, um, I think I just felt quite restless one day. Some of you only think, what was wrong? And I ended up with this. Now, um, I'm going to explain to you a little bit so you know what it's about. Uh, it's basically saying when I'm, uh, if, when I feel a little bit confused or, 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 or a bit lost, I wonder what do I want? And then it goes to a list of things that I experienced in the seven years that I stayed in Kashmir. I was there between nine and 16. So uh, it talks about all, all, all the things from the moonlight um, at night and seeing rabbits and foxes across the but on, on the other hill um, and talks about ice cold water from our own well uh, and all the different foods that grew in the field and we used to have. So here goes in Urdu. And it says, I think I need to be thinking. I think I need to be thinking. I एक मुझे रात गहरी से आ चाहिए, फिर बड़ा हुआ आसमां तारों से चाहिए, चांद तो लाज़िम है पर चौधवी का चाहिए, चांदनी में सामने वाली पहाड़ी पर खरगोश और लुम्बर भी दिखाई देना चाहिए, सुबह के तारे के साथ दादी के उठाने की आवाज़ चाहिए, तारों में पतंग ढूंढने के लिए बैनू का साथ चाहिए, रमजान में शबे बरात के गोलू के मुकाबले के लिए कजन एक-एक वो ही चाहिए ईद पे जूस मिठाई और झूला इट बड़े मामू से चाहिए गंदम दाल और तिली अपने ही खेत की चाहिए हर रोटी पे मक्खन और ताजा दूध के साथ चाहिए पानी यख ठंडा अपने ही कुएं के चाहिए मैं किसान का खून हूं मुझे अपनी जमीन चाहिए मैं कश्मीरी हूं मुझे कश्मीर चाहिए Nice. Oh, I love listening to poetry in different languages. That's so beautiful. And such a gift to be able to write poetry. In. I'm sure the tongue comes naturally to you, but to be able to write poetry in it as well, that's so precious. Like, It's wow. been a challenge writing it in my mother tongue. I started writing in English and Urdu and that came fine. And then when I started writing in my, in, in, in my mother tongue, I constantly wrote about childhood and never any adult theme. And I was talking to one of my friends who's a, who's a linguist, um, and she was like, well, because a lot of your experiences are in childhood, you got yourself stuck there. Do you realise that? You need to think about themes in your mother, in your mother tongue, um, and then write about them. And I, I, I feel like I've grown up in my mother tongue when I've come to writing. Wow. <laughs> That's so fascinating. That one, that one didn't come naturally. I've had to kind of, I've had to work at that one. Yeah. Well. Uh, this last one is to it, 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 the request, Matt. Um, it's... Um, I think it's nostalgia that makes it people's favourite. Um, it, it talks about the time. It, it talks about missing my nan's village. And any child who's ever lived, um, who's had the, ch the chance to go and have sleepovers and stayovers at, at their nan's house can relate to this sort of stuff. So it, it, it talks about, um, it talks about into the location, the kind of food you had, the sweets, the pampering from your cousins, the, your grandma tightened it, 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 doing your plate really tight. Um, that kind of stuff. So um, it talks about old newspapers and stories and um, shade of the trees, all the celebrations, and, and it says it, it, it life has passed, but I still can't, I still can't forget my nan's village. So that's the gist of it. Now I'll tell you in. So I'll share it in party. And it says, Zindiki Guzrigiye, Zindiki Guzrigiye, as per Nani no Grani Pulna, or the leech, or Chulani Pulna, Tapni the Peri Kale Chumunia. Halani roti, the taza salan ni pulna. O makhan o lassi ni pulni, badi halana lard ni pulna. Sardiyan vich mamuni mong phali, e garmiyan vich juice ni pulna. Sriye nalbai vi peeng ni pulni. Nani ni kassi vi chot ni pulni. Atham vich mendi ni gogi ni pulni. Leera nalblayin ya gudinga ni pulni. Pravani ya ditti ya sweetan ta lard ni pulna. O akhbaare jahaan, o saare risale ni pulni. O kare na paani, O char ni pulna, o khulle bere, budiani chan. O ida of the shire, o ida of the shure of shabrata ni pulnia. Zingi guzriki, but nani no grani. Beautiful. Oh, that's, thank you. I really appreciate that. That was lovely. It's so like you still get the mood of it, don't you? You still get the feeling and the. I can feel that it was nostalgic and it was calming and yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Love that. 
I found that with the different languages, because I'll, I'll, I'll listen to some Russian poetry or Italian poets or, or Persian poetry, um, and I find that if I keep it really short, and which is what I try to learn from them, if I keep it short, you kind of enjoy it and you enjoy the rhythm and the tone, and you can get kind of the gist of it almost. If it gets too long, then you're like, I wonder what I'm having for tea tonight. <laughs> so, I've learned that with the English, I can go along for a long time. Yeah. Say something in a different language, stick to that so they're still enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what a gift, what a gift to be able to do that, to be able to craft. Because, you know, I almost think that poetry is another language in itself. So to write poetry in three different languages, that's technically almost six languages. If that make, if you know what I'm saying, like, because it's like another dimension of that language in it. So, wow. You know, really lucky. Well, it's just gone 10 to, so we've got about 10 minutes. I mean, it doesn't matter if we overrun a little bit, but if there's anything that you definitely want to share, or obviously there's no pressure, I'm just, just letting you know. Um, I'm loving listening to your work. It's, it's wonderful. I'll share this as my last poem, if it's okay. Um, it's, um, it's another request. It's because it makes them laugh, I think, with this one. I don't write a lot of funny poetry. I wish I wrote more funny poetry. But this one does make them laugh. It's got a bit of French, so it's got my seventh language in it. My apologies. Um, it's, uh, it's got a little bit of an intro as well. I wrote this in response to a friend. He writes, in, he writes only in Urdu and he writes um, very flowery poetry. It's always complimenting women, only stunning, beautiful women. And I challenged him once, I said, why don't you ever write about ordinary, normal, you know, women? And he's like, there's a genre called aesthetic poetry, you know, get over yourself. Well, I got over at that time, but I was really poorly once. So it was about three o'clock in the morning. I didn't realise how furious I was with him. I got up and wrote this. In the morning, I sent it to him. We didn't speak for a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> this is called Aesthetic Poetry. So he said, <laughs> <laughs> he writes with flowery language. She's always slender and creamy like milk. Her long black hair keeps entangled. Her rose lips wanting. Eyes of a gazelle he's so enchanted by. She moves like an angel and her words are like a nightingale and she always has a beauty spot. I reach the gate where he awaits and my insides want to throw up. I can't go inside there, so I hold my stomach and stand outside. I want a man who is not from heaven, who like me either eats too much or too little. I want him to lie when he gets stuck, like fucking mortals do. <laughs> I want you to have the perfect lips, but a wonky nose, like that dodgy vegetable sold for less for being imperfect. <laughs> I want an imperfect man, just like me, who works hard, tries his best, who fails badly, who produces miracles one day, and a pile of shite the next. <laughs> who can't see clearly sometimes, even in the brightest sun. I want a fool who has the purest intentions, but can't write his own destiny. <laughs> Fucked over like a few others over here. I want a broken man with sharp edges and deep holes, who cuts and makes you bleed, but knows how to do first aid, as I'll cut him more than once with my sharp blades, who knows how to heal himself and sit there with me as I heal myself. I want an unflowery man who features in no one's poems, no one's fiction, because he's ordinary, just like me. I definitely want an unholy man. No fucker tells me. Sorry, I'm going to read that one again because it's my favourite. I'd have messed that one up. Yeah, no, so, no. I definitely want an unholy man. No fucker instructs me all day. You want a machine to program? Congratulations. The sex doll has arrived. Go <laughs> screw yourself. I want a man who is as plain as mud and shines only with my touch, with more dents than a written off car. Because by God, there isn't an inch here that hasn't been refurbished. And then maybe all the magic, all the beauty hidden from prying eyes, away from aesthetic words, not fitting ancient, boring stereotypes of what is beautiful can truly be seen. That's the garden I'll enter. That's a garden I'll create. That's a place I'll belong. That's a place that feels right. That's a place that feels right for good common folk. 
screw your aesthetic shit. It's not real. You're not real. I'm an eastern broken cup, each crack filled with pure gold, irreplaceable, unaffordable, priceless, and way more classy, sexy, and fucking brainy than your world stamped, one standard size, shitty, boring beauty. Enjoy your keeping up appearances life, because rest assured, was ordinary folk, you have a blast. <laughs> That was wonderful. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I won't be writing any aesthetic poetry myself anytime soon, I don't think. Um, wow, fantastic. Um, yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure um, once we get back to gigging and all that, I'll, I'll meet you and get to see these poems in person. I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, have you to send people to? Like, have you got a particular blog? Or I mean, obviously, I tell people to follow you on social media, but... Is there anything you want us to look out for? Like, is the Keithley stuff online? Um, the Keithley stuff is online. If you go to Keithley Arts and Film Festival, you can listen to my recordings. There's four sets of recordings on there. So there's 12 poems um, in, it's in three different languages. There's four different sets of them. I usually post stuff on Facebook and Instagram and sometimes on Twitter. Cool. Um, yeah. But I've got a question before I go. Cool, yeah. Okay. Um, is it true that you've got a Dairy Lee Dunkers date with a mutual friend when you meet her next time? <laughs> uh, apparently so, yeah. I Look, I love Dairy Lee Dunkers. Every single week we're on the shopping list. And our mutual, mutual friend, Claire Crossdale, randomly messaged me and said, do you like Dairy Lee Dunkers? So, you know, how could I resist? So, well, um, she told me, she said she fell for you before she even met you. Um, and then she confirmed, she said, um, he's the same age as my son, and I'm extremely proud of him. But I think what she really was trying to say was that um, it's all right, all you new folk turning up each week on Matt Abbott's, uh, you know, this podcast and show and showcasing your work. But what she, what she wanted people to remember was that if there wasn't Matt Abbott, there wouldn't be us guys here doing a showcase. And she said, I don't know anybody in my life who works as hard as Matt does. So I think from everyone who's been on your series so far, Matt Abbott, I would like to say thank you. Well, I mean, that's very kind of you. And that's very kind of Claire to say. Uh, I, look, I'm just privileged that you've all given up your time to, to do a session. Like, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. <laughs> I get to be joined by wonderful poets like yourself every week since May. And it, like, it's, it's one of the only things that's got me through lockdown, to be honest. I've learned a lot as a writer. I've learned a lot as a poetry fan. But also just as a person, it warms me cockles. So, uh, yeah, thank you. I'm looking forward to being back in Yorkshire. I've lived in London for four years, but I'm moving back to Yorkshire in a month or two. So, yeah, it's all good. Well, look, thanks so much, Nabila. I'm really, really pleased that you shared your work with us tonight. I can't wait to watch it back. Um, so for anyone who's watching this afterwards, please give Nabila a follow, because obviously this goes on YouTube and stuff. But, yeah, I look forward to meeting you in Bradford thank or you. elsewhere. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot. Right. Nice one. Take care. I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow. Um, really beautiful. Uh, so please uh, follow Nabila on, on here, uh, Twitter, Facebook as well. And also check out the work at Keithley Arts on the Keithley Arts and Film Festival website. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing the poetry collection and the novel when they come to fruition. Um, we'll be back next week, 7.30 to 8pm UK time, where we're joined by uh, James McDermott. Um, so don't miss that one. Uh, my name's Matt Abbott. We are in some folks. Thank you very much and uh, stay safe and stay safe.